All right, guys, welcome to another week of Ninja Tricks. Uh, first things first, I'm Coach Sean, and this is my assistant, Heather. Hello. If you notice, I'm wearing an awesome headband. I like these headbands because not only are they headbands, but they can also be a ninja mask. Because ninjas have that mask, or it's just a mask. Be awesome. But I like. I like wearing them on my head because it keeps the sweat out of my eyes. So this is how I I'm gonna do it. Um, so first things first, you want to clear out a safe space and area. So we have cleared out at least a five by five area, and then also you want a responsible adult around, like your parents or my assistant Heather so that I don't get injured doing something silly. All right, after that, we're gonna do some warm-up stretches. So first, we're gonna do some neck rolls, all right? So you don't wanna just bring your neck around. Sometimes you can bring your whole body around. Just loosen up your body, put your hands on your waist. Roll your whole neck and body. Go back the other way. Snap, crackle, pop, just like the cereal. All right, now let's do some arm circles. This is called a mobility joint. Your shoulders are a mobility joint. Uh, mobility joints, let's arm circle backwards. Mobility joints are important because they can move all sorts of different directions, just like your shoulder. Uh, your, your hip joint also is Mobility joint. Guess what your elbow is? See how many directions? It's a stability joint. Stability joints only go two, two directions. And these joints are usually your stronger joints where your stronger muscles are attached, just like your knee, so that you can jump and do push ups. So the different joints have different mobility for different reasons. So let's cross our arms, cross our chest and you really want to make sure these joints are all stretched out and ready to move especially your mobility joints go to the other side because if they're not loose and not ready to move you could really hurt yourself because they're not ready to move in their full range of motion okay grab that elbow and bring it right behind your head Some people can actually reach behind their back and grab their other hand. I cannot. But that's the purpose of stretching. I'm trying to get to yourself to that point. Just like that. Some people have that. And that is your goal right there, is to be able to grab onto your other hand behind your back. I'm actually starting to get there as I, I stretch out these muscles. Uh, now, we're gonna stretch our legs. So, first I want you to grab your left leg. Pull it up. Now, I want you to focus on balancing. That's actually what uh, we're working on this week. Respect and focus, or this month actually. Respect and focus. It takes a lot of focus to balance. And this also takes respecting yourself and your capability. So hold that. Try to stretch that, maybe even bring it forward a little, bring yourself forward a little bit. And then bring that one down. Let's stretch out the other leg. This stretches out the quad muscles. These are the muscles right in the front right here. Um, you need to make sure that all these muscles are evenly stretched out. So not only do we stretch our quads, but we're gonna put our other foot down and we're gonna stretch the hamstrings of the back. So you're gonna reach down towards your toes. You can't touch your toes. If you can do even better, touch your, your palms or your hands to the ground or grab your back your calves. But make sure you're stretching out and you feel that stretch in the back of your hamstrings. All right, now we're gonna 
spread our feet apart and keep stretching forward. Hold that. Like I said, it's, it's very important that we get these muscles stretched out. You can stretch out a little bit further. This actually stretches out your, your inner muscles in your, your thighs. This is called a straddle stretch. Try to reach for one of your feet. Go to your left side or right side. And then go for the other side. What you don't do is try to push your partner over. That's not very nice. All right, and then take your hands, go forward, and try to go straight between your legs. Try to hold that focus. And then bring your hands up, straight up. Feet straight up, straight up tall like a pencil or a skyscraper. Bring the, the now bring those elbows back and stretch out that chest area. Great job. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna roll your wrist. This is what kind of joint? Do you think it's a stability or a mobility joint? What do you think? Your wrist joint. Mobility joint, the wrap. You gotta make sure these areas are nice and limber. And as you get older, they, they start locking up more and more. So it's very important that you keep doing these exercises and stretches. Because if you don't, can't at least make a 90 degree angle with your wrist, trying to do a handspring, a car wheel, or a handstand, is very difficult. Now grab each hand, pull it back. Do one hand at a time. Let's grab the other hand. All right, now we're going to go into a table pose. So you get out of all fours. I want you to take your, your hands up like this and Put them straight down first, and just kind of rock forward. Stretch out those wrists again. You can you know, wiggle side to side. You can stretch out your hips. If that feels good. Go into a child's pose, and then come back up. Now we want you to take your hands and turn them backwards, so like this, and now bring them down. Try stretching them out that way. Now this would be a very good stretch. All right, great job. All right, so now we're gonna warm up. We're gonna get our blood pumping, uh, our muscles warmed up so that we can actually do some uh, ninja tricks. So first we'll just jog in place. You can either bring your knees up, or you can kick your butt. All right, do some scissor jacks. Jump jacks. All right, now we're going to do some inchworms. So we're going to come down and inchworm forward, and then inchworm backward. Jump jack. Go back down. This time we're gonna inchworm forward, but we're gonna stop at a downward dog. 
downward facing dog. So key to making a downward facing dog is making a upside down V. And then you can also feel the stretch in your hamstrings sometimes. And you can, they, they call this walking the dog. So if you're, if you're bending your feet like this, you're actually walking the dog, stretching out those hamstrings, but also working and exercising those muscles. And then we're going to go down into a plank. And then, what is it, an upward facing dog? Up dog, or what is it? Up, up, up. Yeah, upward facing dog, so you're gonna flip your feet downward, and you're gonna stretch your back. You're hold this. You're gonna hold your knees off, and then go back into a downward facing dog. Drop the dog a little bit. Now these are yoga poses. Yoga poses are actually very good for the muscle development. So now we're going to get down. We're going to do a, a child's pose. A child's pose is going to be either with your knees together or separated. It's actually supposed to be a stretching and relaxation pose in yoga. So you're just going to bring your hands forward. Try to put your head down on the floor. Catch your breath. Stretch out of your body. It, it's just not only relaxing, but it's also supposed to get you ready for the rest or to finish your practice. All right, let's go into the actual ninja tricks. Thing. All right, so I'm going to have my assistant Heather explain to you a move. So we're going to actually lead you into a back bend. So back bends are very important because if you want to be able to do back flips or have that kind of mobility, um, you're going to need your back to be able to bend back. Um, and also the back bends lead into a, a bunch of other moves and parkour skills uh, that are important. So that's what a parkour skill is going to end up being, is the back, end, uh, back bend, uh, which is actually going to show be shown to you by uh, Ninja Coach Chris Ulibarri. But to start off, we're going to show you, have uh, my assistant Heather here show you a, uh, a yoga pose that can help you with this. Alright, so when you're starting out, I'll show you from the side so you can see. You're going to get down in a kneeling position with your toes on the ground so your feet are not flat. You have them on the ground, which allows you to engage your core so that you're really strengthening yourself. And if you haven't done the pose before, and you're just starting out, you can grab the back of your hips with your hands up. So you put your hands on it. If that's too hard, you can go to the side. If you want to go down because it's not the right stretch, you want to be stretching out your shoulder. So you put your hands to the small of your back, and you start to lean backwards. You're pulling your shoulders back to help that bend, but you're supporting your back if you're not used to it and your body is not comfortable with that step. So you lean back and you want to lean your legs back. The other way to do that is a full camel pose. If you've done it before, you simply grab your ankles. You can see I sat down to assist myself. You grab your ankles, then you push your hips up forward and you bend your back. You're going to pull your shoulders back and down, and then your head back. What this is doing is stretching the front of your quads, stretching the front of your abdomen, stretching through your shoulders, and teaching your spine and your back to fit. So that gives you a little more flexibility. So practice that for a little bit. Try to see if, how far you can go and see if that can loosen up those muscles. It's also, like you said, it loosen up your, your quads. And, everything in the front so that your back can bend backwards. And then hopefully back bend a little bit easier. So uh, watch this next video and uh, we'll continue with the new tricks after that. Now we are going to start by doing the back bend. 
So back then you can start by doing a laying down technique where you put your hands right by your ears and you push up just like that, okay? You can also have a pillow nearby for safety uh, if you really want to or if you think it's necessary. Alright, so once you've got that, once you do it over and over again, once you get the posture, um, you can now have your parents um, spot you. Okay, so now I'm going to now I'm going to spot you. The first step is to put one hand on the whole back and in reverse. This hand about in the middle of the back, and she is going to do the same motion but standing up, just like this. This week, we're going to actually work on a very simple skill. Uh, it's called the jab. Now, uh, I know we've done jabs before, and you've probably done jabs in karate before. And welcome our little tiny kitty. This is our kitty, uh, Gwendolyn. She's a little fluff ball. But, uh, so the jab, back to the jab, the jab is a very important karate skill. So if you stand in guard stance, it's whatever hands in full front. So a jab is just simply literally bringing up your hand and just a little bit of a twist of the body. You're, you're not looking to project your your movement too much and it's supposed to be fast. Fast. So let's practice ten jabs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do the other side. Now, what does a jab do? A jab, actually, to a person, is going to set your distance to them. So, jabs are where you normally, around where you're, you're fighting and sparring somebody, because this is the distance which you can reach them with a punch. So you can set your distance, and sometimes you're just jabbing the air, and you're just seeing. So if you have somebody there with you, you can always shadow box. Now I don't want you to get too close to hit them, but just jab near them. And just being able to know your distance from them is very important. Also, a jab is way to set up a combo. So a jab and a cross, or a jab and a cross, or a jab and a reverse punch, a jab and a kick, uh, and that often leads into many more moves. So while a jab is not very powerful, it is very fast and a very important skill to have in karate because you really need to be able to set your distance, so practice those jabs, Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Just the other side. Because this one important skill right here is something you'll probably use at least 50% of the time. Because this is a skill that leads into other combos and it also is very important in distancing. And distancing is one of the most important things you can learn in sparring and fighting because when you know your distance from somebody and they take a punch at you and you just have to move slightly back, you know how far you have to be from them and how far you have to travel to be in range of death to either score a point or a hit. So practice your jabs. Let's do it one more time. Scratch stance. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So focus in on a point. You want to focus on that right point, imaginary spot right in front of you, and another 10 jabs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, 
right, great job. That is the karate skill of the week. Uh, practice that, and we'll move on to the game. All right, for the game, we're gonna use that jab. So, like I said, the jab is a very quick and quick movement, quick punch. Also, know, knowing your distance. So, a part, important part of knowing your distance is when something flies at you, you hit it at the correct timing. So you throw that jab at the correct time. So you can either, either have somebody grab a pillow, an actual focus pad, you can grab a giant teddy bear, and throw them at that. Small teddy bear. Oh, uh, no, not a big teddy bear? That's why I land on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll use a focus pad for now. And ready, jab. Miss. All right. Try it again. Jab. There you go. So practice this. Jab. Have somebody throw it to you, or throw it up in the air yourself, so you can throw it up in the air and jab. That was actually a reverse punch. Just kidding. Let me try this again. Jab. And see if you can actually direct it in the, the direction you want. Say, say I wanted to hit this wall right here. Jab. So, that's something you can practice. If you want to bring it up a notch, you can always grab something like a ball. Are you ready? <laughs> it's gonna hit me in the face, isn't it? Ready? So, a ball requires a bit more focus, a little more attention, um, and you can also, as a skill, is you can actually try to grab onto it like a jab. So it, grabbing onto it is a little bit more, so you, you want to just snatch it out of the air. Uh, if we hadn't lost the ball, I would use the ball, but you can try it with a focus pad, like that, and see if we can snatch that out of the air. And what this actually improves is uh, your hand-to-eye coordination, your skill at um, and focus at grabbing things and knowing your the distance from the object you're fighting. So try that. Try try throwing something in the air and grabbing it out of the air if you're up for a big challenge. If not, try just jabbing it, punching it. Let's try that again. Ready? Try it from different angles. Sometimes better from different angles. Makes it a little harder. Sometimes it comes straight at you for, at, at a corner. Maybe, maybe the person throws it behind their head. So try that out. That's a good game. So uh, that's it for this video of Ninja Tricks. Uh, I would like to thank my assistant Heather for helping me out. And I'll see you next time. Bye.